Hello friends! This is actually quite a coincidence because last time my mother was here I made a video about how to know if you have a good relationship with food and today my mother is here again and I'm making a video about how to have a better relationship with food and work on your relationship with food and make sure you and food are like homies. You like each other, you're friends. The biggest thing when it comes to developing a good relationship with food is practicing mindfulness. Your relationship with food is all about your thoughts and your feelings surrounding food, so you just need to be aware of them. If you don't want a good relationship with food, if there's part of you that is holding on to something that is part of the bad relationship with food, like if you have that need to calorie restrict, or if you are attached to that sense of control that comes with setting a bunch of rules for your diet, then you're gonna have a really hard time actually developing a good relationship with food while clinging on to those other thoughts and feelings. But I'm assuming, since you are watching this video based on the title, that you are interested in developing a better relationship with food. So without further ado, tip number one is to look at what food can do for you rather than what it is going to do to you. And this is where mindfulness comes into play. Before you eat, take a look at your plate and take a second to break down your food into its components and look at how these different components are going to benefit your body. For example, if there's any fats on the plate, they help with hormone balance. They'll help keep you full and satiated throughout the day. If there's any carbs, it'll either help you recover from your most recent workout or it'll give you energy and fuel for your next workout. If there's protein, protein is the building blocks of muscles and so many things in the body and so that's extremely necessary to be consuming. Having muscle mass is very important for long-term health as well as just looking fit AF. If there's any vegetables or greens, they're full of micronutrients that give your body what it needs to be able to perform necessary bodily functions. So just take that second and look at what's on your plate and appreciate what it's going to do for you. One thing that I found really helped me change to having this mindset is setting a fitness goal that was not an aesthetic goal. When I started lifting, I got super excited about getting stronger and building muscle. And having those goals really helped me see food as a way to achieve the goals that I wanted to achieve. So if you have a goal of decreasing your mile time, eating food is necessary to help you achieve that goal. If you have a goal of getting stronger, food is going to help you achieve these goals and having them be not aesthetic goals helps you keep that healthy mindset around how food can really benefit your body. All this talk about food is making me extremely hungry though, so my mom and I are gonna go get breakfast. I'm super excited, it's gonna be delicious. Can I get the flying turkey wrap on the gluten-free wrap and add the egg, please? Oh yes, I'm so excited. See, this food is going to fuel my little workout later. I'm gonna get a ton of micronutrients from the kale chips. I'm gonna get some protein in my turkey wrap. It's gonna be a good meal. Are you ready I'm to explore ready. the Air One? Yes. <laughs> I recently found a grocery store that's don't tell my favorite grocery store, but it's even better than my favorite grocery store. And it's called Air One. And if you're in LA, you have to go. I also get questions from you guys all the time as to whether or not I've been here. So this is confirmation that I have indeed been here. We're gonna go adventure. And they have literally all of my favorite health foods ever, I think. I'm pretty sure. We'll double check. Chocolate Rishi Donut. I don't know how we can say no to this. I found the ball of kombucha. So many flavors I haven't tried. $42 ghee. What in the world could make ghee so special? Oh, that's why, because it has 500 million ingredients. The biggest chocolate collection so ever. You know I found my new favorite brand. Okay, maybe not favorite, but one of my new favorite brands of non-dairy yogurt. What is yes. it? Is it coconut? Yeah, it's coconut yogurt. Kalina, homemade by the guy who gave us samples. It's freaking delicious. So good. And there's not a lot of sugar in it, but it tastes really sweet. Just kidding, there's 10 grams of sugar. I'm not as much of a fan anymore. We made a stop to the touristy Abbott Kinney Boulevard to visit the Four Sigmatic Shroom Room. Hello. What's up? Are you making things today? We're another week we should be able to make stuff. So sad. Just found out that Four Sigmatic reformulated their adaptogen coffee mix, so now it has Tulsi and ashwagandha. Y'all know how I feel about ashwagandha, so my mom just got some. Are you excited? I'm excited. Yay. Heard too many great things about this place to pass it up. Yeah. Thank you. Cheers. Best ice cream ever. We just had the best ice cream ever. 
like pretty much ever in my opinion. I had heard so much good stuff about that place. So I was really excited to try it. And you guys know that I generally try to have like higher quality dairies when I have anything with dairy. That ice cream was most likely not high quality dairy. I didn't even really check to be honest, but I'm not gonna punish myself for it. And I think it's really important that when you're working on having a good relationship with food, you don't punish yourself for having certain foods that are like cheap foods or whatever, or just less healthy foods. And you also don't use food as a reward. As soon as you start punishing yourself for eating certain foods or rewarding yourself with certain foods, you start having negative associations with certain foods and certain eating habits. And that in itself can stem into a bad relationship with food. So be mindful and catch yourself if you start thinking, oh, I just ate this pizza, so now I need to go for a run later to burn off the calories, or oh, I just went for a run, so now I'm gonna reward myself with pizza. You should go for the run because it physically makes you feel good and because it's good for your heart. You should eat the pizza because you love it and it's good for your soul. You shouldn't use these things as rewards and punishment. My kind dear mother went and picked up dinner for us while I was at the gym. Isn't she the best? Everyone in the comments tell my mom that she's the best because she's the best. I got a big thing of it. There was a lot of salmon in here, but I ate it all before I remembered that I was supposed to be vlogging today with some quinoa brown rice, arugula, golden beets, and then we got a huge thing of gluten-free pita bread, which is mostly gone, and a huge thing of hummus and Mediterranean veggies, which is mostly gone. God, I'm such a good vlogger. Such a bad vlogger, in fact, that I just didn't finish the vlog yesterday. Just kidding, I have uh, quite a bit more to say and I didn't want to just like cram it all in at the end. So, alas, it is the next day. Starting off my morning with some tea and then I think I'm gonna go for a walk once I finish drinking that. The next thing that I really wanted to talk about when it comes to developing a good relationship with food and helping improve your relationship with food is to be mindful of when you start comparing yourself to other people, when you start comparing your eating habits or what you're eating or anything along those lines. We are all individual different humans with individual different needs and comparing yourself to someone else who has different needs does you like zero good. Also, we are in a time right now where we're being bombarded from two sides by two completely different ideas. One, that you should starve yourself and be skinny and the other, that you should try to cram as much food in your face as possible to prove that you aren't starving yourself, neither of which is healthy. Check this out, I put my cat strainer in my cat mug. How cute is that? <laughs> but we're at a time right now when we're still feeling that pressure of like the diet advice for women from the last 20 years where we're supposed to eat 1200 calories and look like stick thin. But now we're facing this new pressure, which is the backlash to that, where we're doing 10K challenges to prove how much food we can shove down our throats and still have abs. Like, neither of these sides is healthy, and these are the two sides that are kind of screaming the loudest. And when you let these things start to get into your head, it can start really messing with your relationship with food in a really bad way. You just need to do what makes your body and your mind feel the best as long as your like, doctor approves of what you're doing, and just completely ignore everybody else because what's best for your body is not gonna be what's best for somebody else's body. What's best for everybody else is not gonna be what's best for you, so just do your own thing and commit to it and if you start having those thoughts of like oh she's doing this or oh he's doing that I should be doing that check yourself be mindful of your thoughts check yourself and then remind yourself that you are not them okay this is less cute now that the cat fell into the cat and it looks like I'm drowning a cat inside of a cat in the spirit of project comeback I am out for a walk also in the spirit of Project Comeback, I have been tracking my macros for the last few days and I do want to say that you don't have to be eating intuitively in order to have a good relationship with food. Tracking your macros can be an extremely useful tool if used appropriately. For example, if you chronically undereat and don't get enough nutrition, tracking your macros is a great way to make sure you're eating enough for what your body needs. Also, if you are super new to this whole health and fitness thing, tracking your macros is a great way to learn what's in your food, what food's composed of, what foods, like how they affect your body. You can notice trends and learn how to respond when you feel a craving for certain foods and all of that. There are so many different ways that tracking your macros can be extremely beneficial. It doesn't have to be a bad thing. It can be used in many great ways. I did make an entire video about whether or not you should track macros and the pros and cons of eating intuitively versus tracking macros. So if you want my full thoughts on that, I'll link it up there 
and down there. And then another thing that I think is super important to remember is that health is not all or nothing. It's not black and white. Just because you eat something bad doesn't make you a bad person. It doesn't make you an unhealthy person. Eating a cookie or occasionally eating an entire whole bag of cookies doesn't make you a failure. So don't strive for perfection. Strive to do the best that you can with your lifestyle and your situation and your mindset that you currently have. Where mindfulness comes into play is if you do eat that entire bag of cookies, which pretty much happens to everyone at some point in their lives or if you do eat an entire pizza and maybe you should probably have only had half of the pizza be aware of your thoughts during and after this happens if you start down the thought process of oh my god I completely failed I ruined everything now I might as well eat everything else in the house and binge on all of the junk food stop yourself from thinking that and remind yourself that one little setback is not gonna ruin your day. It's not gonna ruin your life. It's not gonna ruin your next vacation. You're gonna be totally fine and you should just move along with your life as though this hasn't happened and continue to just be healthy, eat healthfully, do what is best for your body. And I'm aware that I'm probably making this sound a lot easier than it actually is. I know very well that this is not an easy thing to learn and to deal with. Our thoughts and emotions surrounding food are so deeply ingrained in us that it can take months and even years of practicing mindfulness and reiterating these things that you know to be true but don't quite identify with in order to start making change and seeing a change in your relationship with food. You have hundreds of thousands of hours of data stored in your brain from TV, from random articles online, from maybe your favorite fitness influencers that suggest to your brain that you need to either restrict or you should be eating a bunch of junk food in order to keep balance in your life or whatever it is that is compromising your relationship with food. It's like a really, really, really freaking strong fortress in your brain that is protecting these ideas and you just have to keep hammering and hammering and hammering away at it till eventually these ideas start to crumble and your brain can start to accept the new normal, which is seeing food as a way to nourish and feed and help your body. You are literally rewiring your brain, so be patient and don't get too frustrated with yourself if you have a few setbacks, if you slip backwards in your mindset with food as long as ultimately you're making progress you'll get there eventually and then the rest of your life will be so much easier because you'll have this strong relationship with food you'll be able to see food as nourishment and it just it makes everything else come so much easier once you get to this point and it is so worth the effort it's breakfast time are you hungry I am. I am too. And that leads me on to my next tip. So many great segues today. I'm just on fire. My next tip is to, before you eat, ask yourself if you're hungry. This seems like a pretty straightforward one, but a lot of people eat for other reasons other than hunger. Usually, they are emotional reasons. So if you're about to sit down for food, or if you're just reaching into the cabinet to grab a snack or something, be like, oh, Oh, let me be mindful of, of my inner thoughts. Am I really hungry or is something emotional going on? If you're not physically hungry, then take a second and think about what emotional thing is going on that's causing you to reach for the food. Are you just bored? In which case, maybe you should go do something that's less boring. Are you feeling really sad? In which case, maybe see if you can come up with a better coping mechanism than reaching for food. Speaking of hunger though, I'm hungry. She's hungry. We're gonna get some breakfast. Putting lion's mane in your latte? Good call. Make the face with me. Make, make the face, the face. I do I'm sorry, I'm so I do weird, whatever mommy. I can to not wrinkle my face. <laughs> we had the most amazing breakfast at Source Cafe. What'd you get? I got this amazing frittata. Yes. Yes, egg frittata that came with this a great little salad. I had some amazing coconut yogurt toast, which I was kind of skeptical of, and then I tried it, and it was like candy. We are going to the gym soon, but in the meantime, I have one last tip for you, and then I'm just gonna finish off this video because this has been going on for like two days. It's way too long. I need to finish this video. Bye bye. <laughs> So one last thing before we go off to the gym. If you're ever questioning or wondering where to go in terms of your mindset and your relationship with food, remember that you have one life and one body and you should nourish it and love it. 
My mom's over here nodding, she agrees. Treat your body like you would your son or your daughter or your sister or your best friend. You wouldn't starve them. You wouldn't severely restrict their calories. If they did something bad, you wouldn't not feed them for a day. You wouldn't make them feel guilty if they had a donut once in a while. If they ended up eating an entire bag of cookies, you wouldn't force them to go on a five mile run because that's ridiculous. You'd recognize that they are human and that they can make mistakes and that is okay to do and you would help them move on from that and continue to help them be the healthiest, best version of themselves that they can be. So if you're ever feeling lost for how you should feed yourself and how you should view food in your relationship with food, treat yourself like someone that you care about so you can look at it much more objectively and realize what behaviors would be acceptable for someone that you love and what wouldn't be acceptable for someone that you love and keeping that in mind can help guide you down the right path and those are all of my top tips for how to work on developing a better relationship with food i hope this video was helpful for you guys if you have any other tips that have helped you along your journey please leave them down in the comments below so that we can all share our experiences and learn from each other because that is the great thing about social media this is a two-way conversation and we can all converse down below. In the meantime, please do give this video a big thumbs up because it really does support my channel and I really do appreciate it. Please share this video with all of your friends and your family and anyone who you think could have a little bit better of a relationship with food or just share it with your neighbors like I always tell you. Please subscribe for more videos and hit the notification button so you don't miss those videos and I will see you very soon. Uh, bye!